Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with lesson number 32 on the Raspberry Pi microcontroller. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the concept of analog inputs on the Raspberry Pi. And to kind of put this in perspective, we need to just take a second and look at the big picture of where we are. You've been through 31 lessons with me and we're now ready to talk about analog inputs. Now if you're like me, most of you probably didn't start with the Raspberry Pi. Most of you probably got started on the uh, Arduino Uno. Okay, And the Arduino Uno was the introduction to kind of microprocessors as, as a circuit element and as a, a sort of usable, user controllable thing to me. And when I got this, I was just absolutely amazed. I was amazed that I could take it out of the box and in 10 minutes I had the software installed. I was blinking LEDs, I was dimming LEDs, I was reading from potentiometers and just all these things, analog write, digital write, uh, uh, digital read and analog read. Man, I could just sit there and I could just do everything that I wanted with this huge array of different elements. If you're like me, you love the Arduino, but you reach the day that you could no longer do everything that you wanted to do on the Arduino. And for me what the situation was, was not that I didn't have enough pins or not that I didn't have enough functionality on those pins, but what happened is basically I was trying to do a project of complexity that I ran out of memory on the, res, on the, uh, on the Arduino Uno. And for me that project was the project uh, on the Arduino with Python series we, where we were hooking up a GPS to the uh, Arduino. I had a GPS and I had an SD card reader and then I wanted to add a pressure sensor and a temperature sensor and what I found was was that once I loaded up all the libraries for the G GPS and loaded the libraries for the SD card there was no more room to do the pressure and temperature sensor and so it was sort of like just shut down then what I also found is, is that there's just really no practical way to add memory. It's not, you know, there's just no easy way. And so you're just sort of up against a brick wall at that point. That's how I got into the Raspberry Pi. Now, as you started playing with the Arduino, or if you did these lessons, what you saw is really quick, you could do analog writes, you could do digital writes, you could do digital reads, and you could also do analog reads from the pins. You could do things like read the resistance or read the voltage off of a potentiometer. So at that point, you could do pretty much anything you wanted to. Now, as you've gone through these lessons on the Raspberry Pi, what you've seen that we can do with our GPIO pins, we can do a digital write. We can also do an analog write by simulating analog write with, with PWM. Well, really, that's what you were doing all along on the, RAS, on the uh, Arduino all along you were really doing uh, uh, PWM. If you look at that underneath those pins, it says digital PWM and then the squiggly. What th that's saying is the pins with the squiggly where we thought we were getting analog output, we were really simulating analog output with PWM. And in the Arduino, it's very simple, but on the Raspberry Pi, it's doable, it's straightforward, it's just, you know, it's just not a just single line command. You gotta kind of think about and do a little bit more, a little bit more setup, okay? So now on the Raspberry Pi, we can do everything that we could do on the Arduino except for analog read. So now what you're ready for is, okay, now I can just get rid of the Arduino and just show me how to do the analog read. And remember the analog read, if you will look at those, uh, at those pins up at the top, it, uh, at the top where it says uh, analog in A0 to A5. Those are the pins that you can do an analog read on the Arduino. This is the thing. The Raspberry Pi does not have anything equivalent to an analog in. So you remember on our lessons where we were reading button states, that's about as good as it's going to get as far as what you can read on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. There are no analog input pins, so we are stuck as far as really moving forward on the, on the Raspberry Pi. So how do you deal with that? Well, when I look at the different things around the internet, there's some chips that you can get, and those chips will sort of do kind of like a D to A or, or sort of an A to D. They, they can kind of take something off of your potentiometer and they can put it over there in something that can be read on the Raspberry Pi. But at that point, I really don't want to fool with it. What I think the easier solution is, is to just add a Arduino, your lovely Arduino that you already know how to use, add one of those to your Raspberry Pi. 
There are really some small ones. This is the Arduino Nano. Let's see if you can get a look at that. The Arduino Nano is really very, very small. And this is kind of like a full featured, uh, this is a full featured Arduino. Works just like the Arduino Uno, but you can see that it's much, much smaller. And then if you're, you're willing to sort of program them a little differently, there's some Arduinos that are even smaller than this. And so when you reach that wall where you really have to have analog input, what I suggest is the simplest thing is to get like an Arduino Nano. You can pick one of these things up, a knockoff for about 10 bucks, or the authentic ones are about $34, and add it as a circuit element, add it as a circuit element to your Raspberry Pi circuit. Now, how do you talk and operate between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino? Well, what I like to do is I like to have the Arduino do as much of the interaction with the sensors as possible and then kind of set up a client server relationship with the Raspberry Pi where the Raspberry Pi is the client and the uh, Arduino is the server. If Raspberry Pi wants temperature it tells Arduino to measure temperature, it measures temperature, sends it back. And so that way you can use the analog input capability as well as all the things you already learned about Arduino and then all you have to do is get the Arduino to talk to the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. Well how do we do that? If you've gone through these lessons you already know how to do that. Let's go back to my website uh, Let's see, uh, toptechboy.com. Let's go back to that website. Remember in this first series of lessons, we learned how to use Arduino. Well, in the second set of lessons, we learned how to use Python with Arduino. So remember we had Python running on the PC, and then Python was talking to Arduino over the serial cable, over the USB cable. And so Python talking to Arduino, Arduino talking to Python. You already know how to do that, or you can learn that by going through this most excellent series of lessons here. Now think about it. We are running Python on the Raspberry Pi. So what does that mean? We can have the Raspberry Pi in Python talk to the uh, Arduino over the serial cable. And all these things we learned in these lessons, using Python with Arduino, all of these 17 lessons, you can then apply to this configuration. Another thing, I also showed in these lessons, let's see, where are we? I showed in these Arduino lessons how you could uh, make the Arduino work over Ethernet. So you could have the Arduino hooked to Ethernet, you could have the Raspberry Pi hooked to, to, hooked to Ethernet, and then the Raspberry Pi could be controlling the, uh, the Arduino via Ethernet. So if you really want to get fancy, you can do it over Ethernet. I have the, uh, I have the lessons here on how to do that. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, and then here I have the lessons on, on, uh, on how to do it over Ethernet. Or I've also shown how you can do it in these lessons over serial. The simpler way would be just to hook a USB cable from the Raspberry Pi over to the Arduino. And I even showed how to do it with XB radios. And so you could hook an XB radio very simply to the uh, to the Raspberry Pi on the USB, just like you would on the PC, and then have a uh, have an XB radio over here on the Arduino and talk back and forth like that. All of those things you will learn if you just go in and take these uh, using Python with Arduino. So where are we? What's the bottom line? The Raspberry Pi has the the pretty much the, the power of a full blown desktop computer but it also gives you access to input and output pins. The limitation is, is that you cannot directly do analog read. When you get to that point, bring back your old Arduino, put it, put it into the circuit, simplest thing, talk over serial, and get things running that way. Okay, <clears throat> so that is pretty much where we are going as far as the Raspberry Pi using it with the GPIO pins. Probably up next we're going to look at some of the power of the Raspberry Pi having it take advantage of, of that power in doing things that are more like desktop computing types of things. And so we will see you again shortly. If you like these lessons, give us, uh, give us a thumbs up. Think about sharing the lesson. Leave comments, man. Give me some feedback. Let me know that some people are listening to these things. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.